Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for checking in with Hover Singapore. We're just doing a... Hi, Marlene. Hi, Ilian. So Hi. Nice. How's my audio now? Sorry? How's my audio? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, I can. Excellent. Oh, we have lots of friends here. We have Jill. We have Terrence. Hi, everyone. Thanks Hi, for being everyone. here. Hi, our topic today, okay, if you have watched our last week um, episode of Herbal Review. So Herbal Review is a um, IG live chat that we started um, in April during Circuit Breaker. Uh, we really want to catch up with our friends of Herbal about how has life been for them in 2020 so far. So just to give a bit of background um, of Dr. Tio as well, Dr. Tio Wan Ling today, um, she's our Herbal Tribe member, Herbal Tribe is a collective of amazing strong women entrepreneurs or multi-hyphenates um yeah and dr Tio is a businesswoman she's a dermatologist she, she's also an author she has launched these books um for hair care that's her on the cover looking very good and also the latest one on masking up which is so relevant and so timely right now um yeah, I want to ask you a bit more. I think we all have a lot of burning questions here. Um, I have experienced more breakout on my chin during this period. And my scalp seems a bit oilier. And is it the lack of air conditioning? I don't know. But everyone who just joined us today, if you have questions, please comment. And then we'll try to ad address them during this 30-minute chat. Yeah. Thank you very much, Elian. That's a very, very kind introduction. To you. <laughs> um, and uh, I want to go straight to address uh, the questions that you've just highlighted. Now, first of all, um, breaking out over the um, you know mouth area where it's covered by the face mask is indeed something that uh, we've observed more and more people having uh, over the last couple of months. I'm sure all of us have heard about MASNI. Um, and I just want to shed a little bit of a, a scientific medical perspective on this uh, amidst all the, the beauty buzzwords and um, a lot of information overload, really. Now, it's not a brand new condition. It's actually a variant of a well-established uh, form of acne called acne mechanica. Acne mechanica is due to local factors such as friction, pressure, um, as well as the microenvironment of the skin being affected by humidity, um, increase in skin temperature, for example, uh, all these will influence little subtleties in the skin, such as pH, the microbiome balance, which really refers to the type of bacteria and the organisms that live on your skin. So it is not a surprise to us that this new, um, you know, lifestyle intervention of wearing a face mask, which is, is actually mandatory in many countries, um, has led to increase in acne mechanica. Um, now, the second thing about your scalp, um, it is very uh, common in Singapore for um, young adults who do produce a bit more oil to develop a bit of greasy scalp uh, because of this condition called separate dermatitis. It's commoner in tropical climates like Singapore. So as you know, once we hit puberty, our body, because of the influence of hormones, Start producing, starts producing oil, and this oil, together with the ambiance factors of increased heat, temperature in an outdoor environment, can breed the overgrowth of a certain type of yeast known as malassezia. So malassezia can cause seborrheic dermatitis, or what you just described, oily scalp, a bit of scalp discomfort, um, and sometimes people even develop uh, dandruff. It is a medical condition known as separate dermatitis. Now that itself is also worsened by stress as acne is. So it's not surprising that in this um, you know, 2020 where so many things have changed for all of us that we see an increase in the incidence of uh, these concerns. But they can be fixed, right? 
Absolutely. So, I mean, as a dermatologist, the important thing I always highlight to my patients is uh, we, uh, we understand first the uh, disease process and then we can suggest therapies that directly address it. So it's, it's not as if you, you're kind of, you know, wondering and, and doing a trial and everything, but these are established diagnoses. Once you have the correct diagnosis, there are specific medical treatments expected for these conditions. Great. I also want to find out a bit more about your business during this period. So how is Circuit Breaker like for you personally and professionally? Well, um, I think it was uh, probably a lot better for us than a lot of others. The reason was because we, I actually implemented teledermatology already end of last year for my overseas patients. So it was uh, something that we, we felt was a, a real need uh, for international um, you know, patients who couldn't, uh, for example, get their medications or um, get the regular consultations at a specialist hospital. Uh, so we've been doing that for medical dermatologists specifically so the transition for us was not so abrupt except that we certainly had um, a lot more patients that qualified for teledermatology from February onwards and as you know our circuit break I believe started sometime in April or March or April and um, we already had about six to seven weeks of a uh, little bit of prep before we decided to convert in fact 95% of all our patients um, you know, work through teledermatology. So let me share a little bit about teledermatology with you because it, it could sound a little bit foreign. So it's, it's something that's not brand new. Telemedicine um, is an established field within medicine, just that dermatology being a visual specialty is very um, suited for this sort of uh, virtual consultation. It is still considered a legal consult, um, but of course, the way we design the protocols, they do have to abide by you know, medical legal standards, the clarity of the photos we require, they have a certain standard, and of, of my nurses as well, they um, are in fact a lot busier because they, they have to um, do a lot of video uh, explaining and um, the, the unfortunate thing of course is that um, we've lost a bit of the, the human touch and the interaction, but of course we try to make up for it in terms of the time we spend um, and also, you know, my practice has always been based on um, educating the patient uh, about disease processes and uh, empowering them to be able to handle the, their skin or scalp conditions. So, I mean, um, at the end of the day, it's been difficult for a lot of people, but um, I think it's, it's something that we, we've all go, grown used to it. Yeah, it has been. Um, I also want to find out you, you know you have been quite you have the foresight to launch that last year even before COVID happened so you know furthermore how have all these recent experiences this year how has it moved away you you view work and life well you know um I would say that the most important uh, lesson that all of us should take from take home from COVID is is humility, because um, I think for too long we have all been um, you know very self centered in, in terms of as a society as a modern society, and we've forgotten that we are really a part of a, a very large ecosystem which is nature herself. Um, myself, I am I've always been very into botanicals and um, nature. My you know, personal hobby uh, is gardening and I have been growing edibles for the last five to eight years. So, wow. I mean, um, the humbling experience that all of us ha have gone through because of COVID, you know, when there were some uncertainties even about food supply and, you know, the mad rush at the grocery stores, etc. I think it, you know, helps to mold a uh, perspective that you, you're really not alone in this world, uh, as in with your humankind, but you have to bear in mind that whatever actions um, you, you, you make, um, mm -hmm. and especially when it's impacting the environment, be it the animals, or uh, even their habitats, there will be some sort of consequence that we have to suffer. Um, sure. So 
Yes, I think that this is the most humbling lesson and, you know, food sustainability uh, for, for one uh, is something that I have been uh, working on. In fact, um, my new project that we've been uh, researching over the last uh, eight months or so is born out of my, my great interest in uh, sustainable vertical gardens and it's a solar powered um, home vertical hydroponic system. Amazing. So I mean, I'll be very happy to share it with you. But um, at the end of the day, I feel the biggest take home from this entire 2020 COVID experience is um, the fact that you have to understand we are part of an, a larger ecosystem and, and you're not just, you know, kind of um, manipulating um, the other species or uh, even, um, you know, agricultural land that's um, you know, for, for, for our food source. So we, we can't take these things for granted. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. So besides the concerns that um, we have addressed, which is not just my concern, but some of your patients' concerns when it comes to their skin. So do you feel hear a lot of um, background noise on my, on my end? Are are you, you can hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly though. Okay. Are you okay with what, what's okay, going great. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. I just worried that the feedback to you. I want to ask you, what are some of the, for those, um, for those of us who just want to be able to take care of our skin on a daily basis, what are some of the must-have uh, ingredients in our skincare that will help to take care of our skin, brighten our skin, and most importantly, uh, even skin tone, which is what I'm after. Right, that's a great question. And um, before I answer that, I want to set the background um, right to the scientific approach towards aging. So okay. you have to understand that the skin is an organ, just like your lungs, your liver, your kidney. And it's really a reflection of the um, entire biological processes and how healthy these processes are before we get to the skin. Now, the great, as the great thing about um, topical application, uh, you know, with serums and um, creams, emulsions, is that it's able to access the skin directly. So as long as you're able to address the process of cell senescence, which is responsible for the process of aging, you can uh, expect some sort of efficacy of the product in terms of addressing age-related uh, environment pollution-related um, consequences, such as you know, what you mentioned, lack of radiance, uneven skin tone, irregular pores. These are all what we label as the negative signs of skin aging. Now, on um, you know, a, a more specific note, I want to talk about the uh, importance of the, the use of botanicals. So we're on the topic of plants and nature. And the amazing thing is that the earth has uh, provided us with all these little miracles in mm -hmm. the uh, life of a plant. So we are familiar in, in dermatology with the concept of antioxidants and antioxidants specifically, we can um, you know, subdivide the compounds into anthocyanins, polyphenols. Now these are huge complex you know, scientific terms which I want to break down for our uh, listeners today. Now if you, um, you know, understand that um, aging itself or the um, you know, consequences that lead to skin dullness is due to free radical damage, then you understand the concept of how antioxidants combat free radical damage. And polyphenols present in uh, extracts like green tea, camellia sinensis, right, resveratrol extracted from um, grapes. Uh, these have potent uh, free radical scavenging properties. And that's exactly what would target mm. the cell mechanisms that's responsible for these deteriorations in your skin appearance. Now, I'm going to go on to a second category of ingredients, which I'm sure you've heard of, and that would be vitamin C, which is really um, an established antioxidant. So even in conditions such as mask me, vitamin C does play a role in you know, uh, improving the condition of your skin via two ways. First, is in controlling the acne itself. The very fact that it's an antioxidant molecule means that it makes it slightly more difficult for the bacteria responsible for acne to cause inflammation. Now, secondly, we all know that vitamin C reduces scarring because it lightens the uh, amount of pigmentation through melanin inhibition. Right. Um, so I'm going to just uh, summarize everything into um, you know like two important uh, functions that a good ingredient should have and, and when it's formulated in skincare and that would 
B, does it protect the cell? What we call cell protective effects. And secondly, it, it protects you against the environment as well. So I'm sure you've heard of the term photoprotection in uh, prevention mm -hmm. of sound damage. So botanical yeah. extracts, have this amazing property of uh, fulfilling both the antioxidant, cytoprotective, and photoprotective effects on skin. Okay. I also want to. I also want to ask you the next question. But before I do that, um, I'm going to ask you a bit more about um, clinics, even better radical dark spot interrupter and corrector. But before I ask you the mm -hmm. questions for that, mm -hmm. I would like to let uh, our viewers know that there is a giveaway element today. We have five bottles of this in 30 ml. That's worth $115 to give away today. Um, and we will announce the winners. So within the next 10 minutes, I would like you to, those who are here, please give me your most creative uh, tips on how you have taken care of your skin during this period of wearing masks and working from home. So the most creative, the most, the top five creative answers. So we will select the winners by about uh, 1.30, just right about, about that time. I will announce the winners. And while you share with us, while the viewers share with us their creative answers and their creative tips, um, Dr. Tio, I would like to ask you, um, what are some of the effective ingredients in this product that you would say that um, will be some of the ingredients you mentioned earlier that actually work for our skin to help us have that even skin tone and the bright skin that we're looking for? Absolutely. So while we're doing that, um, I'm just going to give the readers a tip as well on how to read the ingredients on your skincare product. So it is um, an FDA and HSA requirement that all skincare products that are sold have a full ingredient list, right? So um, the topmost ingredient is the one which is present in the highest percentage and right down to the bottom, right? So this is how you can roughly sense, you know, how much of each active ingredient is present in your product. So um, I have examined the um, Even Better Clinical Serum and I am very happy with the formulation, um, the great thing uh, is the combination of botanical extracts that uh, this product has, um, you know, demonstrated. So the uh, presence of not just the, um, you know, the Camellia sinensis polyphenols, which we discussed earlier on, but in combination with other nature derived uh, yeast extracts, as well as rice bran extract, for example, is a potent anthocyanin, which means that it works directly on the cell mechanisms to reverse a lot of the sun-related uh, or environment-related um, aging processes. And when used regularly, it will help to improve the radiance of the skin as well as skin quality. Now, the second thing I want to highlight is doesn't mean if it's a serum that's meant for, say, skin lightening, it completely ignores the, the concept of the, the skin barrier. So a good antioxidant serum will also have moisture stabilizing properties. In this case, the even better clinical serum contains sodium hyaluronate, squalene, um, glycerin. Uh, all these are uh, important humectants that help to trap moisture under the skin. And um, in order for us to have healthy, radiant skin, you have to address both the antioxidant um, properties of a, a, a cosmeceutical product, as well as the barrier restorative properties of it. So that overall, you don't just have um, you know, radiant skin, but it's also healthy skin that's resilient against the environmental stresses. I see. Well, that's, that's good to know because oftentimes we we look at our products, we buy our skincare products, and we don't exactly know what to look up for. Yes, um, I think it is something that, uh, you know, it's difficult for anyone to navigate simply because of the, the deluge of information on the internet, um, a lot of advertising that's going on. And at the end of the day, I think that, you know, we should be moving towards the direction of promoting skin health um, because it also... Uh, helps the self-esteem of every individual uh, rather yeah. than uh, pointing out just, you know, the, the negative effects of, of aging or, um, you know, trying to attain something which really is, is not part of um, skin health. 
Yeah, so that, that's something that has kind of characterized my practice from the start. Uh, at the end of the day, we will never... Um, you know, be in a position as, as dermatologists and any physician should have this perspective to tell the other person, hey, look, this is, this is what you have. You should get this done. It's, it's not about that. So um, it is important for us to center on the uh, individual, right, as a whole. And, um, you know, as doctors are meant to be promoting health, dermatologists are playing the very important role of uh, explaining the process of skin health, the treatment goals um, in, in this very confusing world of beauty. Speaking of that, I want to also find out more. Um, can you explain more about those dermatologist tested products? How do they differ from other products in the market? Well, I have to first highlight that this term isn't regulated. Okay. Um, so you probably find that the majority of your products um, in the pharmacy, in the supermarkets, in the malls, uh, they, they have this label on it. Increasingly, we find that. So uh, you know what they say is dermatologically tested. Now, it has um, absolutely no uh, regulation. So it is important to understand uh, really the, the brand uh, history, the brand ethos. Now, um, if it has been dermatologist tested, it does not necessarily mean it was developed in conjunction with a dermatologist in a, in a clinical setting, um, or nor does it mean that they work with dermatologists to, to assess certain efficacy or the allergenicity of the product. Um, Clinique is a brand that has, uh, from the inception of this, uh, of, of the, the, the brand, uh, worked with dermatologists. And I think it has also um, been very, um, you know, well known for keeping its uh, product formulations allergy free. So these, in my opinion, are much more valuable than uh, just a label dermatologist tested. Um, at the end of the day, it is really a, a lot of, um, you know, information and labels that have been uh, thrown around in the world of beauty. Um, and it is probably educational for us to, to share these with our viewers. Mm, definitely. So I also want to find out, um, are sunspots and discoloration, um, are there relevant concerns that people, now that people are wearing less makeup? and also less sun protection while they're at home? Well, you know, it, it seems like a, a straightforward question. The answer is yes or no, but it's not so straightforward because we're talking oh, okay. about, um, you know, a visible uh, imperfection on skin. And uh, men and women, I've seen them um, all in my uh, practice, who are bothered by the, these visible imperfections on their skin. And what may be not so severe to me is very obvious to them. So it really is a reflection of um, how they themselves um, have, uh, you know, suffered with this perceived imperfection over a period of time. Now, on the topic of pigmentation, uh, I didn't find that there were less people bothered by it throughout this entire period. But, you know, there's always been uh, individuals who uh, may not have very severe pigmentation, but who are more bothered about it than certain other individuals who maybe don't care about it at all. So mm -hmm. um, let's just go a little bit into the signs of pigmentation. So we all know that we're, we're born with a a natural skin photo type, right? And it's not healthy for us to be chasing after this ideal of lightening our skin or, uh, you know, changing our skin tone. But the absent, the presence of uh, increased pigmentation over specific areas, so such as sunspots you mentioned, uh, are actually a, a term known as solar lentigo. It's a diagnosis that's related to, first of all, age, sun damage, right? And genetics. When you have solar lentigo, it can be a little bit disfiguring. Uh, specific treatments for that would include uh, using topical ingredients that uh, inhibit melanin synthesis and overall enhance the cell synergistic effects of um, your, your uh, skin's chemi uh, chemical mediators that help to remove the pigmentation. Uh, for deeper pigmentation concerns like melasma, I'm sure you've heard of melasma. Now that's yes. different from sunspots and it's not at all, um, <coughs> sorry, 
Um, it's not at all directly related to um, you know just staying at home or, or being outdoors. Surely uh, that there, there is less sun exposure during this period of time, but it's a chronic, long-standing process. It takes many years for an individual to develop early signs of melasma and hormonal changes. For example, are one of the uh, principal concerns um, that you know we feel influence the development of melasma. I see. Um, I also want to address some of the questions that we have here in this chat. Um, you know, it's so apt that you're talking about how you're farming your own uh, fruits and vegetables. Are there any superfood that we can consume that really helps with the skin? Well, uh, Eliane, I love this question. It's my favorite question of, of all. Because that was the I first question we got. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a great question uh, to the reader. So congratulations. Um, <laughs> I feel that um, skin health is a manifestation, first of all, of your general health. We've spoken so much about antioxidants and polyphenols, but as, as we are aware, we are what we eat, your diet plays a very important role. Now, talking from a scientific perspective, there have been a, a lot of uh, studies relating the um, you know, uh, effects of a high saturated fat diet that's also a high sugar, uh, the consumption of dairy products as well as um, you know, chocolate that worsen the symptoms of acne. But specifically to your question about skin radiance and skin health, um, mm. it is true that when we are consuming a healthy diet um, consisting of superfoods, okay, so superfoods, uh, I think we're familiar with kale, um, these are from the uh, category of botanicals known as brassica oleracea, so kale, broccoli, cauliflower, these are superfoods because they have the ability to inhibit uh, the growth of cancerous cells. And we know that from day one when we are born, we are, our body is actually constantly fighting off the uh, proliferation of these cancerous cells. So when we stop it, we are not just um, you know, halting the process of aging, as you know, children don't age. But when we go past the age of 25, which is about the time our skin starts to show the, the, the signs of aging as well, we're also trying to address this uh, cell senescence or the cell aging pathway. Um, beetroot, for example, is one of my favorite foods. And I'm not sure whether you're aware, but uh, it is one of those uh, superfoods for athletes. So I myself, oh. I do a lot of sports. Yes, and um, it's been proven to increase your body's uh, ability to uh, take up oxygen and uh, increase your stamina and your performance as well. So wow. I use it very creatively um, in all my meals. Uh, I actually have um, you know, converted to a predominantly plant-based diet since the start of COVID. Um, oh. The reason, you know, I'm not sure whether it's relevant for us to share here, but... Sure, um, please do. Uh, yes, so, you know... I think as a medical doctor, it was very, very scary for, for me to uh, see what uh, you know, COVID was all about because we've yeah. never, ever seen any microorganism, any germ, any infectious disease of this nature, meaning it's, so, uh, it's potentially uh, life-threatening, potentially fatal, but at the same time spreads asymptomatically in you know, otherwise healthy-looking individuals and the fact that it's so infectious. Now, the origin of this virus, we know um, from science, okay, from the data, that it's uh, from the animal kingdom. And it is not normal at all for these viruses to cross over to, to us in, in such a way and you know, cause a pandemic. Now, um, you know, we are worried also about the bird flu and swine flu, and it has to do clearly with the fact that, do, that we are encroaching onto um, another species uh, habitat um, and farming them in ways that are unethical, right? Um, mm. That's causing the, the, um, uh, all these uh, mutant pandemic strains to arise. So as a personal decision, you know, I decided very simple we stop eating animals honestly we're much less likely to to get another pandemic right it's not uh, impossible yeah. but much less likely and it is increasingly borne out by science as well and nutrition that we can get a complete uh, holistic diet from a plant-based diet now i eat a lot of fish still um and it is um full of what we call the good uh, good fats, good unsaturated 
lipid fats that help with our skin health and the process of anti-aging and for our brain health as well. Um, but, you know, I think that it's important for us to appreciate that, um, you know, our diet is very significant for nutrition, first of all. And if you're talking about a cosmetic concern like your skin, uh, it's reassuring to know that what you eat will affect your skin as well. For sure. I mean, the skin is our largest organ, right, in our, in our body. And yes. also, okay, before I ask you one last question, I think, um, I want to make another call for creative skincare tips so you can win this 15, uh, 30 ml serum from Clinique to give you an even better skin tone and brighter skin. So I have another question here. Um, does using, okay, this is from the comment here. This is from, let's see. Okay, how different is the skin on our face and arms? I think this is a good one. Um, I have chronic arm acne. Would you recommend using the same products as what I use on my face? Yeah, that's a good one. I never quite figured that out. The skin on our face and our body. Okay, so can I just clarify the question? Um, the question is, this individual has acne on their arm. Is, is that what we said? Um, arm. arm acne, so like around here. Arm. Oh, okay, sure. Mm. So um, I think it's very, very important for us to address this. Now, if you have... Uh, acne-like lesions on your body, it does not always mean that it is acne, okay? Oh. But let me just talk about the differences between your facial skin as well as the skin on the rest of your body. Um, the key thing here is the production of oil, okay? The face is what we call a seborrheic area. Our palms and soles, for example, are completely devoid of oil glands. Okay, so you're never going to have any oil gland related issues on your palms and soles. Um, depending on your genetics, certain individuals may have more uh, oil production over the V of the chest, the central chest, as well as their back as well. And that can be a manifestation of acne. But when you have acne, like lesions on the upper arm, um, it is not so typical, um, you know, for it to be true acne vulgaris, which is what we've been talking about so far. It's influenced by genetics caused by uh, hormonal factors, increasing oil production, as well as bacteria. So um, acne-like lesions on the upper arms uh, can be a condition known as keratosis pilaris. Okay, so that's actually a form of eczema. Uh, you know, it's, oh. the short term for that is KP. Um, individuals with keratosis pilaris have these little uh, tiny bumps. There may be a bit of pigmentation. Uh, it can also get inflamed. So in that sense, it can look like acne because of uh, infection. But the distribution in this case is very important. It's over non seborrheic or less seborrheic areas like um, the upper arms. Um, and some individuals have it on their thighs. Um, now, it's probably relevant for us to touch on other mimics of acne. So uh, a lot of people who suffer from acne on the chest and the back, they may have a concurrent infection known as pityosporum folliculitis. So you've heard the term fungal acne being thrown yeah. about. Okay? So perhaps in the uh, temperate countries, in the Western nations, they're not so aware that it's a real problem here in the tropics. So as a dermatologist practicing in the tropics like Singapore, I want to highlight that a lot of individuals with chest and back acne actually have concurrent pityosporum folliculitis. And that is caused by a yeast. It's a fungal organism. It overgrows in a hot, humid climate and also where you produce more oil. So treatment for this condition has to address the yeast overgrowth and is typically with an antifungal preparation, an antifungal shampoo, a cream, in conjunction with um, anti-inflammatory acne treatment if there is acne as well. Interesting. I never knew that. Wow. I mean, that's yeah. why we're dermatologists. Information <laughs> overload. <laughs> no, but I mean, totally this uh, comment that we have about how, like, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that we're learning today within this short chat. But to kind of round it up, uh, I kind of want to ask you something a bit more personal. So, you know, how you talk about how you change your diet quite a bit, how you only focus on eating non-animal uh, diet, a non-animal diet. 
Um, but what have what else have you done to to ensure an even better you? Whether any self care well, tips? You know, I I love the perspective of this campaign because self improvement. I, I think that essentially describes my 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 life ethos. For those who know me, they always they know that I'm always thinking of um, you know learning new things and uh, adopting very um, you know holistic integrated measures uh, for health in general. So I have always been uh, an, an avid athlete. So I still, um, you know, do a lot of sports. Um, I think that it's important for every individual to understand that uh, our, and our life really, you know, depends on the decisions we take. So you can talk about your mental, your emotional and physical health. Um, but you have to understand that they are never independent of each other. So when you address your physical health, as in this case, we are addressing the, the um, health of your skin and the various measures which have been proven to be effective, uh, you mustn't neglect the uh, emotional, the psychological effects. So, you know, it, it's very difficult for a lot of people uh, to grasp the fact that, you know, we, we're no longer able to socialize as freely, you know, attend events, as we did before. But um, I think it's also been a, a very, very good healing process for all mm -hmm. of us, right? Because the way I view COVID is, is as if, you know, we were all traumatized by this major catastrophe. So there's the initial process of, you know, you, you're just so shocked, you, you don't really understand. And then you start to grieve a little bit and then you accept. Um, that long-term life lessons that I would like to share with, um, you know, my, the, the, your, your readers is essentially that, you know, you, you have to look, um, you know, in, within yourself for um, your sense of identity, first of all. Um, and that includes being very comfortable and uh, assured in um, your life goals and not being um, swayed right by the things that's ha that are happening around us because mm -hmm. if, if you do that then it's very unsettling and um, you know with this kind of climate where we, there, there is a limitation on our uh, social life as well it becomes very difficult to manage so if you are able to find that inner sense of identity it helps you to cope with the things around you um, and that's has that's always always been my, my way of dealing with various stresses right because we're not going mm -hmm. to be able to live in a world that's trouble-free um, and even on the best of days there will be a little hiccup so it's, it's not that you have to you know wish that everything will go exactly the way you planned it but rather you know that you are equipped to handle things that uh, you know end up on, on, on your lap. I agree with you I mean I tend to see the cup half full and I think the upside of COVID is that you know what we are all in this together you know yes, like none I mean, of us there is there. no better way to phrase it Yes, I'm so glad to have you today. But now is the best part of the chat that I'm going to announce the, um, the winners for the giveaway. Five bottles of this clinic, even better, radical dark spot character interrupter. Okay, so here we go. First, I have Rubble Marbles. I love the handle. <laughs> June Devils. Chelsea dot Chelsea.ung18. The fourth person is made waves underscore bath. And the last one we have wrong, uh, wrong in. So um, we're going to have a comment in the comment box about how you can redeem these prices. Email us at this email address and then we will let you know how to redeem the five bottles. And thank you again so much, Marlene, for being here with us today. Thank you thank for you your great tips. And congratulations to all your winners. Thank you. And thank you so much for being her world tribe. I'm really, really honored to have you as part of our community. It's been a real pleasure. And um, I'm very proud and privileged to be part of this. So thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll catch, we'll catch up again soon. Hopefully yes, in face, yes. face to face. Yes, hopefully. All right. In the meantime, take care. All right. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye.